our service today is morning prayer rite two, and it begins with introductory sentences on page 77, and then we will pause for a moment to hear an opening introit on the organ. I want to uh, thank Keith Gillis, our senior warden, and Rick Brockmeyer, our master of acolytes, for being here today, and also for uh, Miss Jennifer, our music director, who is with us and uh, providing music for us uh, this morning. Uh, during our service. Hear these uh, sentences from 1 Corinthians. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. service continues on page 80 with the invitatory and psalter. Lord, open our lips, and our mouths mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to, to the, the Father, Father, and to the Son, and to the, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit, as it was in the beginning, beginning is now, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord is risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. Continuing on page 83, we say together, Alleluia, Christ, Christ our Passover, Passover has been sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast, not with the old leaven, the leaven of malice and evil, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and truth. Alleluia. Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. The death that he died, he died to sin once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So also consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Jesus Christ our Lord. Alleluia. Christ has been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since by a man came death, by a man also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, so also in Christ shall all be made alive. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord has risen indeed. Come, let us adore him. Alleluia. The Psalter appointed for the day is a portion of Psalm 63. beginning on page 670 in the Book of Common Prayer. You can follow at home with us if you'd like. We will be reading this responsively by whole verse, reading verses 1 through 8 of Psalm 63. O God, you are my God, eagerly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you, my flesh faints for you, as in a barren and dry land where there is no water. Therefore I have gazed upon you in your holy place, that I might behold your power and your glory. For your loving kindness is better than life itself. My lips shall give you praise. So will I bless you as long as I live, and lift up my hands in your name. My soul is content, as with marrow and fatness, and my mouth praises you with joyful lips. When I remember you upon my bed, and meditate on you in the night watches, 
for you have been my helper, and under the shadow of your wings I will rejoice. My, my soul, soul clings to you. you. Your right hand Man holds me fast. fast. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as, as it was, was in the beginning, beginning is, is now, and, and will, will be forever. forever. Amen. Amen. first reading today is uh, an unusual one <laughs> taken from uh, the first epistle of St. John. The first lesson is taken from the first epistle of John chapter 2 beginning at verse 18. Children, it is the last hour. As you have heard that Antichrist is coming, so now many antichrists have come. For this we know, that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they did not belong to us. For if they had belonged to us, they would have remained with us. But by going out, they made it plain that none of, that none of them belongs to us. But you have been anointed by the Holy One, and all of you have knowledge. I write to you, not because you do not know the truth, but because you know it and you know that no lies come from the truth. Who is the liar but the one who denies that Jesus is the Christ? This is the Antichrist, the one who denies the Father and the Son. No one who denies the Son has the Father. Everyone who confesses the Son has the Father also. Let what you heard from the beginning abide in you. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, then you will abide in the Son and in the Father, and this is what he has promised to us, e eternal life. I write these things to you concerning those who would deceive you. As for you, the anointing that you receive from him abides in you, and so you do not need anyone to teach you. But as his anointing teaches you about all things, and is true and is not a lie, and just as it had taught you, abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him so that when he is revealed, we may have confidence and not be put to shame before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you may be sure that everyone who does right has been born of him. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, to, be God. to God. Following at home, we will say together Canticle 21 page 95 of the Book of Common Prayer. You are you God, God, we, we praise, praise you. You, you are, are the Lord, we acclaim, we acclaim you. you. You are the Eternal, Eternal Father, Father. All, all creation worships you. you. To you, all angels, all, all the powers of heaven, cherubim and seraphim, sing, sing in endless, endless praise. praise. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. The glorious company of apostles praise you. The noble fellowship of prophets praise you. The white-robed army of martyrs praise you. Throughout the world, the Holy Church acclaims you. Father of majesty, unbounded, your true and only Son, worthy of all worship, and the Holy Spirit, advocate and guide. You, you, Christ, are the King of glory, the eternal, eternal Son of the Father. When, when you became man to set us free, you did, you did not shun the virgin's womb. womb. You overcame the sting of death and opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. You are seated at God's right hand in glory. We believe that you will come and be our judge. Come then, Lord, and help your people, brought with the price of your own blood, and bring, and bring us with, with your, your saints, saints to, to glory everlasting. everlasting. The second reading. The second lesson is taken from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 6, beginning at verse 30. The apostles gathered around Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. He said to them, Come away to a deserted place all by yourselves and rest a while. For many were coming and going, and they had no leisure even to eat. 
and they all went away in the boat to a deserted place by themselves. Now many saw them and recognized him, and they hurried there on foot from all the towns and arrived ahead of them. As he went to shore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion for them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. When it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a deserted place, and the hour is now very late. Send them away so that they may go to, into the surrounding country and villages and buy something for themselves to eat. But he answered them, You give them something to eat. They said to him, Are we to go out and buy two hundred denarii worth of bread and give it them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves have you? Go and see. When they had found out, they said five and two fish. Then he ordered them to get all the people to sit down in groups of the green, on the green grass. So they sat down in groups of hundreds and of fifties. Taking the five loaves and the two fish, he looked up to heaven and, and blessed and broke the loaves and gave them to his disciples to set before the people. And he divided the two fish among them all, and all ate and were filled. And they took up twelve baskets full of broken pieces and of the fish. Those who had eaten the loaves numbered five thousand men. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Canticle 19, page 94. The ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth. O King of all the ages, who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing your praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Amen. Continuing on page 96. We say together the Nicene Creed. I believe in God, the, the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty, Maker of, of heaven, heaven and earth. earth. Of all, I believe, I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was, was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Amen. Before we started this morning, um, Rick came to me and said, boy, that first reading is a weird one. <laughs> it is. Uh, it uses terms that we don't use very much. It talks about Antichrist which I would imagine that when most of us hear that word, we think of you know, something with horns and a pitchfork, right? Something otherworldly. Uh, John was not referring to that. John was simply referring to anything that opposed Christ uh, and the truth of Jesus with lies. And we're familiar with that. We're all too familiar with lies. And the two readings today from the epistle, the first epistle of John and Mark's gospel set up a juxtaposition between lies and truth, between singularities and community. Uh, too often, when people use lies to their advantage, it is out of a sense of greed, selfishness, uh, a desire to divide, a desire to set oneself apart and to gain power for oneself. 
That's what a, 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 lie, a good lie is, is for. It's to set oneself up and apart and above their neighbor. Whereas the truth ultimately brings us together. I would imagine that most Episcopalians don't know this, but our worldwide communion, the Anglican communion, our motto is uh, you will know the truth and it will set you free. And the idea that truth brings us together in liberty, whereas lies divide, uh, is a theme that is running both, both through the New Testament and gospel lessons on this fourth Sunday in Easter. And it is a caution to each of us that we work for the truth and not for falsehood. That we work for the building up of community versus the building up of the individual. Notice in the miracle story of Jesus, Jesus did not do the miracle on his own. What did he first ask for? What do you have? And the disciples were shocked by that. They were, they were surprised that Jesus was going to feed the 5,000 through their small amount of food. Five loaves, right, and two fish. And he takes those. He takes exactly what the community has. He gathers it together. He prays over it. He blesses it, and then he gives it away. And that ritual action is mimicked every time we gather for the Lord's Supper. We take bread and wine that the community has provided for. People that we've set aside in our congregations to serve as leaders pray over the bread. The Holy Spirit blesses it. We break and distribute it, and it satisfies all of our needs. And that that first action and that miracle of Jesus feeding the 5,000 with what they had brought with them is the same miracle that reoccurs over and over and over and over again at every Christian altar. Uh, when the bread is broken, the prayers are said, and Jesus' body and blood are shared among the people. And that is something that can only be done as a community. And that's something that in this time of, of, of virus and quarantine, I have missed greatly, as I know each of you have, who are sitting at home watching this this morning. You have missed gathering around this altar. You have missed taking in the very nourishment for your souls that the Christian church throughout the centuries has said, this is the bomb that will strengthen us and heal us. And yet right now we cannot share in that. And so we must be content with our prayers that our prayers will unite us when we are distant from one another, and that one day we will gather again in the presence of Jesus Christ as a community and do what the community does, which is receive strength from its gathering and strength from our risen Lord. That's not done as individuals. I wish it were. But most of the time when we are left to our own devices, we end up like First John. <laughs> We, left, we are left to be led astray by those who would preach falsely, by those who would, would be content with spreading lies um, and living off and benefiting from those lies versus the truth that comes from community, that comes from the gathered people, the gathered church of Jesus Christ. And so until that time, we pray. We pray in our homes. We pray in these empty churches that we can one day be re reunited again. And that theme is at the very heart of Easter. That was on the mind of Mary Magdalene when she ran to the tomb on that first Easter morning. She felt distanced. She felt alone. And suddenly she was surrounded by angels. And then the angels ask her, Woman, why are you weeping? As if it were some shock. Why do you shed tears? Do you not know that he is risen? And then they see and point to Jesus. And Mary Magdalene sees Jesus, the risen Jesus. 
and all of it changes. And it's done in community. She goes and tells the disciples, and they rush to the tomb, and they see for themselves. And then they go and they wait. And as they're gathered together in community, Jesus appears to them in the upper room. And then later on, he'll appear to them by the sea. And he'll cook for them. And all of this is done in a community together with people sharing what they have, offering it up to God. God blesses it and, and in doing so provides the miracle of nourishment spiritually and physically for the world. That's a story worth telling. You heard a little bit ago uh, Jennifer playing. You heard the words, or you heard the tune. I want to give you the words for that. Um, in the New English Hymnal, which is not one that we use on Sunday mornings, it is the very first Easter hymn. The day draws on with golden light. Glad songs go echoing through the height. The broad earth lifts an answering cheer, and hell makes moan with wailing fear. For lo, he comes, the mighty king, to take from death his power and sting, to trample down his gloomy reign and break the weary prisoner's chain. Enclosed he lay in rocky cell with guard and armed sentinel, but thence returning strong and free, he comes in might of victory. The sad apostles mourn him slain, nor hope to see their Lord again, when to their very eyes restored, they look upon the risen Lord. Those wounds before their eyes displayed, they see in heavenly light arrayed, and what they see they testify in open witness fearfully. O Christ, the King of gentleness, the people's hearts do thou possess, that we may render all our days an endless sacrifice of praise. Maker of all, to thee we pray, fulfill in us thy joy today. When death assails, grant, Lord, that we may share thy paschal victory. And that paschal victory is truth over falsehood, life over death, community over loneliness, even when we are distant. For we are truly never alone as the Holy Spirit leads us and guides us into truth. May you have a blessed fourth Sunday of Easter. Amen. prayers continue on page 97 uh, with the Our Father. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father who Lord art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving help among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten. Nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, whose Son Jesus is the good shepherd of your people. Grant that when we hear his voice, we may know him who calls each of us by name and follow where he leads, 
who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you, that the week to come may be spent in your favor. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplications and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry they may truly and devoutly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. We offer prayers this day for those on our parish prayer list, those who've been commended to our prayers for their families and their caregivers, especially those who are living alone. We pray for the people of this parish, O oh Lord. We pray for health and safety among them, and we pray for our community and its leaders. We pray for Donald, our president, and, and Andrew, our governor. We pray for the leaders of this church, for Justin, Archbishop of Canterbury, for Michael, the presiding bishop of the Episcopal Church, and for Mark, our bishop in this diocese of Lexington. We pray for the people and clergy of the Ohio Valley Deanery and for the priests of this parish. We pray for those in need or any circumstance, O oh Lord. We pray for those serving on the front lines during this time of virus and plague. We pray for our medical professionals, doctors and nurses, for staff that run hospitals and keep doctors' offices open. We pray for their safety and healing, and we pray for an end to this pandemic. We offer prayers, O oh Lord, for all of those who work behind the scenes to allow life to continue on uh, in ways that are both great and small. We pray for those who deliver our packages, for those who uh, cook our food uh, in restaurants and other places. And we pray, O oh Lord, that as we transition back uh, out of different levels of quarantine, that you would provide a hedge of protection and safety around us all. We pray for those celebrating birthdays in our parish this week. And we give you thanks, O oh Lord, and ask your blessing to be upon Abby and Donovan, who were joined together in the sacrament of holy matrimony yesterday. and all of our prayers, we offer them to God. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy.
Before we conclude our service today, I want to thank all of you for watching this morning and hope that you've received a blessing from this. Uh, I do uh, pray and hope that in the weeks and month and weeks and month to come that there will be some relaxing of quarantine. But until then, I pray that each of you remain safe. If you are in need uh, of anything, whether it be groceries or other items, uh, and you need uh, someone to go to the store for you or take you to the doctor or other things like that, please call us here at the church so that we can help you out with that. I want to thank Keith and Rick again for uh, assisting today along with Jennifer uh, in providing this opportunity for us to worship and to bring uh, morning prayer to you from uh, St. Andrew's Church here in Fort Thomas. Uh, thanks for watching and again thank you for the continued support that each of you as members of this faith community uh, continue to offer and pledge to, the, to this church and uh, to its financial resources. Thank you. Uh, for being such a blessing to this place and to this community. Uh, as we close, I'm going to uh, ask uh, Rick if he would uh, pray us out with the great or the general thanksgiving uh, on page 101. Since I ran roughshod over him during the first canticle today, Rick, would you uh, offer this prayer for us? Certainly. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray you give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts we may show forth your praise not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service, and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Ghost be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Amen. Continuing on page 102. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Amen. And now let us uh, set and enjoy our postlude for the day. Amen.